All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of the More Than Love podcast. I'm your host, Terry Duran. I have my co-host, Jay Bavo, with me. What's going on, Jay? Not much. Ready to get to another good show tonight. Yeah, man, tonight uh, we got a topic we're going to be talking about fuckboys, deadbeats, and dumbasses. Um, these seem to be the kind of men that women always want to bring up on my page or use as a point of reference, so I figured we'd address those type of men today. Um, but before we get into our topic of the night, we, we like to start the talk, I mean the podcast off with a segment that we call Terry's Top 3, where we basically highlight three of the most interesting or controversial posts from my Instagram page at Terry Duran. Um, so this week we're going to be starting off with the video. Uh, this is a video that I posted of, of Lonnie from The View, giving her perspective about online dating and the first dates. Let's take a listen. When you online date the way yeah. I online date, right? Okay. You meet a lot of dudes, so you have to um, you have to uh, actually divide and conquer. All right. <laughs> okay. All right? You have to you have to see what they're about. Okay. And so sure. usually it starts with a text. You know, you meet them with okay. a text, and then um, the thing that I have I have like higher standards. So like if they say <laughs> let's meet for coffee, yeah. then to me I feel like you're cheap because. No, because either you're dating a lot of women and you only want to spend five dollars on me. Oh, you know what I mean? Or okay. I would rather for you say let's have dinner, dinner. because to me There's dinner is a whole different. It's, it's yeah, because okay. I just don't you know meet you in two weeks and then go out with you. We're gonna have a text conversation, then we're gonna have a phone you get conversation. Get to know them a little bit, and then we. But I hate for me, I hate the coffee. All right, man. Now, with a lot of women. You know, take this kind of approach to dating where they use things like this, like date location, and they make this, they treat it like it's this major evaluation of a man. And so listening to her in the video explain her philosophy, the other women are soaking it in as if she's really giving them some game. You know what I'm saying? Like, and what she essentially did is tell them that I meet guys online, I spend a couple of weeks texting. I spent a couple of weeks talking to him on the phone and I still haven't been able to make a judgment about the guy. So I use where he invites me to, to, to be the, to be the final call. And based off, I use my assumptions about where he invited me to make my dating decision. Like, it sounds like, well, first of all, do I find a flaw if she's making the steps versus like, okay, well, we're gonna text her and then have a phone conversation and then go out. So I mean, why can't you just have a phone conversation? Yeah, I mean, it's a, yeah, it's, it seems like usually when women have this set of rules and this set of standards on how things are supposed to go, those are usually women that struggle with dating, right? Because these are the kind of things that disrupt the dating process and decrease a woman's chances of experiencing relationship success. But what this what this does is it causes women to eliminate quality men for stupid reasons. Like there is absolutely nothing that about where a man invites you that lets you know whether he's a quality man or not. That let, let that let you know. Like okay, I'll, I'll take that back. There could be I guess some date. I guess if a man invited you to a soup kitchen or something like that, that could let you know he was broke or poor or something. But. A man inviting you to Starbucks or somewhere where he can just, the purpose is to just meet you face to face and have a, a face to face conversation is that, foolish to cut a man off for that. I was going with that as well. Me, me, like, who cares what, you know, if you meet at Starbucks, what, what's the harm in that? You know? Man, a lot of women care though. That's the thing. A lot of women really care. And this this plays into the, our topic of the night where we're, right. we'll, we'll be going to be talking about fuckboys. Because this is the type of thing that plays right into a fuckboy's hands. Fuckboys are smart enough to know. Women place an astronomical amount of value on where you take them on a date. So all a fuckboy has to do in this case is text her for two weeks telling her what she want to hear. Say what she want to hear when they talk on the phone. And then invite her to a fancy restaurant. Now she's made up in her mind that he's dating material because she think he got money. Of a man shouldn't be based on where, where it's taken to take me out on a date at, you know. I mean, it shouldn't be based off of that, you know, like you said, it can be fucked more than they invite you out to a fancy restaurant. And for what it's worth, I mean, most, you know, 
you have guys out there that are just trying to attract women. Hell, you you don't know. You, can, you might not have hot chicks in the window, throw it out of there. You can write, you got to sit you have to draw a goat trying to, you know, impress you. Yeah, I mean, there there are men that use money to attract women. And those type of men are going to get, get get what comes from, from using that approach. But when, when you're talking about just a normal dude, like if you're talking to a dude for two weeks, you've been texting him for two weeks, you don't know what he do for a living? What in the hell are you talking to him about? What are your conversations about where you, where you two weeks of texting, two weeks of talking on the phone, you didn't learn shit if you have to make an assumption about where he invites you on his financial status. That shows me that you are failing the dating phase over and over and over again. And a lot of women, like, it sounds like they get this mindset that just because they date, uh, volume date, they, they do talk to a lot of guys, they meet guys online, that that's somehow improving their dating, when it's really not. Because a lot of times they use flawed strategies like this. But, and, and like, and you know, it, it, it really doesn't mean anything. Yeah, you know I mean, it just means that, okay, you got a bunch of dudes that want to have sex with you. Uh, I mean, that's what God is. Well, it, that don't necessarily mean anything if, if a dude is but, inviting you. Uh, well, I'm, I mean, just, just to, to bring it back to what she's talking about. Where a man invites you to, to have his first interaction with you does not indicate anything you know what i mean like especially if you had weeks or a whole month to interact with this dude and learn about him like that shows me that you, that women are not talking about the right things they're not having the right kind of conversations and it's the exact reason that i created my dating guide because women don't know what conversations to have they don't know what information to get and so oftentimes they end up using foolish, and, illogical information like this right. to make and, their and dating decisions. I mean, and it's a foolish question. Listen, you, you text Mike for two weeks. I mean, what are you really going to learn? You, you talk to him all the phone, you have a phone conversation for the next couple of weeks. What do you really learn about the game? They can tell you anything from text or a phone conversation. Yeah, I mean, it's easy to, to deceive somebody over the phone, especially if you right. met them online. So that's the additional risk that comes with meeting somebody online. You can get Absolutely. catfish, etc. But my point is, once once that online, either if, even if it's sliding through a DM or whatever, however you meet, once it goes from you got the actual phone number and y'all are texting, and it goes from texting to talking on the phone or FaceTiming, then you should be able to ask whatever you want to ask and figure out what you need to figure out without having to rely on an assumption. You can never have a successful dating experience if you are using assumptions as your primary sources of information. Well, That's where I mean, she's going wrong. I feel right, and I feel like this. I feel like you know, this might the internet should just be an introduction stage when when you're initially meeting somebody off here. It should be an introduction stage, but you know, you're obviously gonna learn the most from by meeting and, and actually interacting with face to face. True. All right, let's uh let's switch gears. Let's let's kick it into the second post that we're gonna talk about. This is a post that I that I was that was sent to me, and I was asked to give my thoughts on it. Um, so the post says, "My dad told me if a man cares about you, you won't ever have to wonder how he feels. He'll constantly remind you," and that really hit deep. And in the, in the post, I, I I actually agree with what the post says. Yes, a man that is really cares about a woman or really loves a woman is going to make it known how he feels about her. The problem that I have with the with the meme or the quote is how women judge how a man feels about them. A lot of women seem to judge a man's feelings towards them based on how they would treat a person. And so what often happens is a woman will expect a man to respond to things the way that she would. When she falls in love, she acts a certain way. And so if a man doesn't display his love like that, a lot of women will assume he don't give a fuck or assume he don't care and come up with these false assumptions that they often use to make their dating decisions. Just like kind of the, the last post we were talking about. And so the problem with, you know, women making their assumptions about how a man feels, it, it, it usually turns out to be inaccurate. And that's why when we see women, you know, they'll get up, a, a man, something will happen and it'll hurt their feelings or upset them, right? And a lot of times it's a man just doing normal guy stuff. 
He didn't know you were that sensitive about that or he didn't know you were felt that strongly about it. And so what women will do instead of communicating and letting them know, hey, that hurt my feelings or whatever, they'll go on a crusade to teach him a lesson or make him feel how he made her feel. And and, and a, a lot of times women will either go to the extreme and go to the max and go way overboard on a situation that didn't really warrant that. Or they'll do they'll create an issue over something completely unrelated to the original topic that doesn't teach the man anything. You know what I'm saying? Like so, the, using your assumptions about what a man feels is if if that's what you're doing, you're probably headed down a path that's going to hurt your relationship or hurt hurt your dating situation. Right. Yeah. I mean, first of all, I mean, I mean, I agree with with the premise. Uh, of the post there, but uh, what, what is constantly reminded? Like, if you have to say, you know how much I love and care about you every 10 minutes? I mean, yeah, I mean, it's it's really subjective, you know, and, because some men, some men don't really verbalize their feelings like that, you know? Like, right. the, the way that I, that I explain a man loving a woman, um, a lot of women seem to think that a man loves you means he'll be faithful and he'll be loyal and they'll come up with these kind of hopeless romantic version of things and that's right. not reality. Um, in reality... It's, it's like this, I don't know, just the tone of it sounds like, you know, she wants to be reminded, you know, so, you know, often more often not about how much you love and care about her. Well, well and, and, and a lot of men are not going to do that because... Right. From a male standpoint, the way that a man demonstrates his love for his loved ones is he uses his time, effort, and his resources to make sure that they are taken care of. So right. whether that's paying bills, whether that's having to use a favor, whether that's having to spend his money, whatever the case may be. Right. I mean, he's going to show it through, through his actions rather than, you know, verbalizing it. Well, well, you have to be more specific than that because women will say he'll show it by his actions and then they'll just use actions that don't really display that, you know, like right. oh, a man, I, a I, man I, could, that, that could want to, want, want to just chill by himself and a woman will make up something that what it really means or why he really did it. And, and a, a lot of times these are the things or the misunderstandings that lead to relationship turmoil, you know, what I'm saying? or a relationship ending because it hap if it happens over and over and over again, a man is going to get tired of defending himself of, against false accusations. You know what I mean? Especially if he's told you multiple times, that's not what I feel, or you're putting words in my mouth. The, the, the things that men say whenever these type of situations occur, if it's continuing to happen over and over and over again, it's going to it's going to begin to, to destroy the relationship at the fabric. Yeah, definitely. No question about it. All right, so let's see. Let's move to the, the, the last post. The last post was a post that I put up, um, and it, it said, a woman can feel however she wants about her worth, but if the men in her dating pool feel that she isn't worth giving their time, attention, and effort to, it really doesn't matter. The consumers are always the decision makers in a market system, and men are the ones that are shopping for girlfriends and wives. Now, I put this up, you know, kind of to rebut one of the, mo the, the most popular catchphrases or cliches that we have out there, know your worth. You know, women will constantly post about knowing their worth and knowing their value and all this, except, all this type of stuff. But what they, they, the problem with that is they only choose parts of a market system to use. You know, they use the words that make them feel good and present themselves in a, in a light where... Well, they they the feel that they, they get to be... know your worth. It, 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 it's subjective. Yeah, I mean, well, it's I, not I, being I, I, used I, I, accurately. That's the premise of this, of, of, of this post. Well, I mean, obviously it's subjective, but just the way that they're applying it is inaccurate. You know, it's not right. the... When you go shopping, it's the person with the cash or the money that's about to spend their money that determines whether they're going to spend their money or not. That's the reason that people that, that stores put price tags on items so that you can look at it and you can determine if it's worth spending that amount of money on. And so it's the same type of principle when it comes to dating. Nobody can force a man to hit a woman up, to give a woman his attention, or to try to, to spend his time with a woman. 
You can't force that on somebody. So a man is always going to get to decide who he feels is worth it. It's going to be the woman right. that he, he likes the most, the one he enjoys the most, the one who is reciprocating his energy. You know, if he feels that you're not showing him love or you're not showing him interest, he can decide to not hit you up. He can decide to not invite you on no more dates. And so when women go around tell, trying to tell men what their worth is, it's really something that's only applies to the, how they view themselves because right. a man is going to make his own determination on wh whether he feels you're worth it or not. You know what I mean? Like, so well, I think, I think most of the time, you know, take it with a grain of salt and be generous until you can prove otherwise. Right. Because I mean, what woman is going to go around saying, Hey, I'm not a quality woman. You know, I'm not that valuable. Right. Like, so, so they're not going to be, I mean, no woman's going to, I mean, well, most women is not going to be self-appreciating like that. Yeah, I mean, and so so it's not realistic to even expect that, you know. And so it is going to be up to each individual to determine if the person that they're dating is worth them continuing to date. You know, a woman should be doing the same thing. That's why I, I, I preach against women trying to go into a relationship, trying to guarantee it becomes a committed relationship. You don't know shit about this dude. You don't even know if you're compatible with them or not. So that should not be your objective. Your objective on dating should be to figure out whether me and this person are compatible or not. You know what I mean? Exactly. And so, so when women are trying I think, to... I, I think a lot of times they get missed because, you know, a woman, you have, you know, a certain woman going into these situations thinking, okay, I'm looking for a committed relationship. And, you know, like I said, that, gets, that kind of gets glossed over there. Yeah, I mean, well, it, it's really, it's very, very obvious when a woman is looking for a committed relationship. You know, yeah. there, there there seems to be this myth where women don't seem to think men can tell when they're trying to pressure into a relationship or trying to press the fast forward button. But ladies, let me just clear that up. It is very apparent when I, just from a conversation with the woman, when she is seeking a committed relationship and everything that she talks about and everything that her, her behavior is going to reflect that and so that kind of prevents that from actually happening but that's something that a lot of women seem to do you know um, they date with the purpose and they, they come up with all these things to try to get the assurance or a guarantee that their current dating situation is going to re lead to a committed relationship saying like I don't think a lot of women are built to date a, a lot of men at the same time like they're perfectly uh you're allowed to date her, however many people you want but right. most women get emotional emotionally attached to the one that they like the most so what that does is it causes them to kind of curve or neglect the other guys so most women can't keep it up to the point where it's going to be consistent not the way that uh, a lot of guys are able to juggle multiple women and, and and having multiple romantic relationships at one time. So even though in theory you, you would think you're right, a woman only right. that talking to one dude every day, only texting one dude every day, you know what I'm saying, or curving everybody else or not have, really having any interest in anybody else, it does kind of back her into a, a position where she's sitting there with her fingers crossed hoping he commits to her one day. You know what I mean? Which to me seems like a very bad position to be in, especially right. since most men don't want to be in committed relationships for a variety of reasons. All right, it's, you know, she put out, you know, basically put it put out into one basket there, and then when it does when it doesn't work out, then she, you know, is disappointed, and then it's you know, oh, but well, why did you make me do X, Y, Z? Why did you do boys like stuff? Why, 
Why did you take me on dates? <laughs> I mean, you know, we, we've heard this stuff, you know, time and time and again here. Very true, very true. All right, let's keep it pushing, man. Let's get into our topic of the night. Uh, tonight, we are talking about fuckboys, deadbeats, and dumbasses. Um, these are three categories of men that women claim to hate and want to avoid. Um, these are the women that I try to school on how to avoid so that they can seek quality men and men that are viewed as husband and father material. So tonight, I'm, I wanted to just elaborate on these th these three types of guys. You got your fuck boys, your deadbeats, and your dumb asses. Go, go ahead, Jay. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. So, all right, so I, I wanted to provide some clarity on exactly what each one of these terms mean. Because a lot of women just kind of throw these words around. Anytime a guy does something they don't like, they call him a fuck boy or so. And... When you misuse terms and just throw them around randomly, a lot of times they lose their 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 context. So when we're talking about a fuckboy, we are talking about a man that uses lies and deception to get what he wants from women. Whether that's money, whether that's love, whether that's sex, whatever the case may be, his primary method of getting it is through the lies and deception. So he's going to pretend to be something he's not. He's going to alter his behavior or his his persona to fit whatever he thinks it takes to get what he wants from a woman. That is what we mean when we're talking about a fuckboy. That from a male perspective, that's always seen as lame. That's always something that is frowned upon because it's unnecessary. Men are very capable of being extremely successful with women by being authentic and presenting an authentic version of themselves. What they do, what they care about, how they get, how they kick it, how they, what they do for a living. A man can present everything about himself 100% authentic and still be extremely successful with women. So fuckboys are frowned upon by quality men because fuckboys are trying to pretend to be the quality men. Though that's who they're trying to present themselves as to women. Because they know that women want the quality men, the men that got their lives together, the men that are seen as responsible, ambitious, respectful, etc. Right? Um, so th the second term is a deadbeat. A deadbeat is a man that doesn't take care of his responsibilities as far as his household and his family are concerned. Don't, he's not responsible. He's not reliable. He does not put needs above wants. Like he, he, he doesn't do these basic things that are expected of a, a man that is a husband or a father. Like a man that's a husband or a father um, or, or, or just the man of a household, period, can't afford to make bad decisions just because he wanted to do something, just because it felt good or it was fun. He has to put his needs and his long-term uh, well-being above everything else. And so if he's going to be in a serious relationship, that's his role. He's expected to, to be leading the relationship by off, offsetting the woman's emotional-based decision-making with logic and reasoning and being able to make decisions that, that put them in the position that they want to be in as a couple, right? So a, a, a deadbeat is a man that fails to do those things. So if you end up with one, you're going to suffer financially. You're going to be frustrated. He's not going to handle his responsibilities, etc. He's going to be a burden. And right. then, with, with the whole, that, I feel like this. For, right, was, if, if, if a guy has, has kids and he ain't taking care of his, don't have to kill him. You know, he's probably not going to take If he has kids, he's more than likely not going to take care of that kid. Yeah, I mean... Some of the decisions women make to get with these type of men is is will blow your mind. But you're right. If, if you right. simply sit back and interact with someone for a, uh, any length of time, you will be able to see how they treat their kids, what they do for their family members. Are they even family oriented? Like you can tell all these things if you spend time getting to know someone before committing to them. Right. Like if, 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 if he's going to treat somebody else that way, He'll, he'll more than likely teach you that way. I, I agree. You know what I'm saying? It's a, it's a bad position to put yourself in. 
sitting there like how you baby mama number five you know what i'm saying like but this is the kind of stuff where i'm just trying to give women a more logical approach to evaluate the men that they're dating so that when they do come across a dude like this they can take their feelings out of it and make a logical decision that's going to be better for them long term right um so let's let's see the last definition a dumbass that's that's self-explanatory uh, a, a, a dumbass is a man that makes silly decisions and lives by an illogical value system. There are lots of dudes that have crazy philosophies that they use to um, guide their lives or make their decisions. You know what I mean? Like there are men that won't have, don't wear rubbers, and man, there are, I, I can't even count the number of silly but, philosophies. I, mean, I think, I think some of those for all those probably you know fall into the yeah, I guess you're right. I didn't think about it like that. You know, just because because when I get asked about it, I I don't have the answers. I can't explain a lot of the, the behavior that these men do. You know, what I'm saying a lot of the decisions that men make that put them in in a bad position or make them undesirable to women. I agree. I mean, but you got a lot of guys that are raised by single moms that only have sisters and don't really understand <laughs> exactly. what it takes to be a real man. You know what I mean? Like, so, right. especially in this, yeah, this day and age, right <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, a lot of them don't have fathers in the household. They don't have real, real male role models or people to guide them in their communities. You know, so a lot of a lot of the youth are missing. They're growing up off media, off YouTube, off, off these different sources. And so they're using this masculine energy that you see um, in, in music and on TV as their their defining factors on what a man looks like. And that's not the reality. You know, one of the things you want to make sure that is how well you are at keeping your emotions in check when it turns into True. I mean, I, now I'm not talking about you know when a loved one passes away. I'm not saying that you know. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it, when it, when there's an extreme situation, is a, a man breaking down or crying or having some extreme reaction is warranted. Um, but only if like men are just expected to have control over their emotions. We're not we're we're not expected to suppress them completely. You know what I mean? But. But you have to be able to handle minor situations or situations that are common or commonly going to come up without breaking, losing your cool, without making a decision that's going to cost you more money or put you or your family in a worse position. Sometimes you have to make a decision that may go against what you want to do because it's better for your family long term. Like sometimes you may have to accept something so that you don't end up in jail because that will put your family in a fucked up position. You know what I mean? Like those are the type of decisions or things that a real man has to consider. You can't just fly off the handle. You can't just re- respond emotionally with the I don't give a fuck type of attitude because that's not how a person that's going to be seen as a leader or husband material is going to operate. You know what I mean? Like you have to be the 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 prevailing cool head in a situation because in in most crisis situations as we see the women are going to be the emotional ones so you have to be you have to balance that out you can't have two emotional people or two people that are that's you know that can't be the recipe for anything good when you have two people that are making decisions or acting out based on emotions yeah, that that's the man. That's that's a, a recipe a recipe for disaster. That's you know what I mean? Up. Like that's a jump to fire. What you have to do. So now, now that we've identified the three type of men that we're talking about, and for those of y'all that are just tuning in, we're talking about fuck boys, deadbeats, and dumbasses. Now, all three of these types of men are very easy to spot, but for anybody that communicates with them and interacts with them on a regular basis. 
And so w when when you're interacting with them on a regular basis, you have to compare their actual actual behavior to what they told you. And that's how you spot the inconsistencies and you spot that's where you can be begin to find the deception to figure out if a dude is a fuckboy if he's lying to you or not. Right? So I, I put together a couple of things that I think women should be focused on when they're in the dating phase to try to help them identify these type of men before they get committed. You know what I mean? Um, because if you're already in a relationship with them, then it's too late. You, you've already put yourself in a position where you're cutting off the potential quality men that you could be dating. You're increasing the chances that you end up pregnant by this person. And you're increasing... A lot of times they are in a, in a really bad predicament uh, where they're trying to recover. They see the they know they are they in that situation, and they still and the writing's on the wall. Charlie in that situation, and some still choose to just keep going along with it. You know, and I think sometimes it's just that stubborn. They they go along with it and hope for the best. Like like I said, a lot a lot of them. That's hopeless romantics, bro. Hopeless romantics hope for the best in every every dating situation. They hope it lasts happily ever if they hope they fall in love. That's right. why they called hopeless romantic. They constantly right. hoping for the outcome right. that they right. wish for. And sometimes, you know, I think sometimes you can see the ego thing to sort of because, you know, they they go ask, you know, they think, oh, well, I can change it. Or they go in a situation knowing you see the you know, one of those categories, if not all the above, and True. still go in that situation thinking they can change them and it doesn't happen. And they're like, oh, you know, I thought you loved me. I thought you were going to change. I, I don't know what happened. Well, the, the, you know, signs are there. Yeah, you know, you have to pay attention. Data factors, and, and that's exactly what I'm about to get into. So, ladies, there, there are a couple of things that you should be paying attention to during the dating process. So, when you, when you start meeting, a, when you start dating a guy, you need to be paying attention to how a man's priorities are set up. What do I mean by that? A man that is constantly like th things like his time management. A man that you say, "Hey, let's do something." I want to. What you can, can we go hang out Friday? And he, t a man that really has his priorities set up, will have to tell you no for certain things. No, I can't do that because I gotta wake up early Saturday. No, I can't do that because I have something else to do. Like he has to have things where he's committed his time or his energy to certain things and he and other people are relying on him. You want a man that is really big on keeping his word. I told such and such I help him move. So yeah, I'm tired. I don't really want to go, but I'm going to go up and go anyway because that's my partner. I told him I help him. Like those are the type of things or the type of scenarios that you should be looking for in a man that you are dating. Not not a hundred percent guarantees, but you you'll get you'll be able to get a sense of how does he treat his word when he tells somebody he's gonna do something. How much effort does he put into making sure it actually gets accomplished? If he promised somebody something or something unexpected came up, how does he handle it? Does he does he go out of his way to try to make sure his partners, his, the people, or that that are relying on on him, are not just asked out? You know what I mean? Like, does he take the L when he he committed to two things at once? You know what I mean? Like, those are the type of things that give you a real glimpse into how quality men operate. But, and to someone that 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 stays to their word, you know, they got to be shown the level of responsibility there. Yeah, you you have to. So, you know, you, know, you got somebody that, that, that out there handling their business and, and staying true to what they, what they say. Yeah, you, you have to observe behaviors. And it's not just how a person interacts with you directly. You have to pay attention to the things that they do and the things that they make a priority in their life. All right, so the next thing uh, and that you just touched on that, Jay, uh, it was how does he treat responsibilities in handling business? Like, that should always be a man's priority in his life. You know what I mean? Like, because that's how you take care of your family. If you can't take care of your family, you are getting, you are failing as a man. 
You know what I mean? If you can't take care of yourself and your family, you are doing something wrong or you've made some very poor decisions. So you have to peep, peep these things before you commit to a man. You know what I mean? Like, like I say, there's no rush when you're in, in a dating process. So you don't have to try to rush into a committed relationship. The person you are dating that might have the magic dick and might be the perfect height may not be compatible with you. He may right. not be good for you long term. That's, and, that's more so sexual compatibility. And that isn't, you know, sexual compatibility obviously doesn't mean relationship compatibility. Um, you know, hey, it's not every man that has, you know, in the past that sexual women that they probably wouldn't, you know, get into a serious relationship with. Right, exactly. And so, especially for, for women that have goals of being a mother or having a family. You need to make sure the man that you are dating is family oriented. Exactly. How how how, how involved sure, is? They make sure he's responsible. Yeah, well, I mean, just it just specifically family oriented because a man can right. be responsible and just not be family oriented. You know what I mean? Like yeah, if you have right. goals of having kids and having that a vision of having a family unit and all that, you need to see how what what his thoughts and feelings about a family are. How he interacts with kids, how he how involved is he with his family? Do he want to do family get-togethers and family barbecues, or is he a, a, a type where he don't hardly ever go and, and, and engage with his family? You have to pay attention to that type of stuff because if you pregnant by him, it's too late. You know what I'm saying? Like it's too late to figure out he don't care about a family or he don't spend he 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 does not have um, he doesn't ex view a man. As, as having to spend quality time with his family. You know what I mean? Like, those, those are things that are very important that you cannot afford to overlook when you are dating somebody and, and trying to pursue a well, serious relationship. But, but another example, too, you know, you know, in, in not paying his bills in the state, he's getting evicted from, from an apartment. He got evicted to an apartment to do with him. That should show you right there that there's different tax flaws, you know, or he's in and out of jail. Yeah. His friend is dusty. His friends are dusty. <laughs> How you going to raise a potential family with a guy like that? Yeah. Um. The, the another that that kind of um touches on the next thing that I wrote. It said you need to make sure that he's able to provide for himself, or he is actively doing something to put himself in a better position. Like he can he can be broke right now. Is I'm not saying you can't date nobody that's broke or struggling. But they need to be actively doing something to put themselves in a better position. So that six right. months from now, they're not in that same position. Next year, they're not in that same position. They're doing that. They're making, they're taking strides or making steps to get a car so they can get a better job, so they can get back in school. Like they have to be actively doing something. Otherwise, right. they're just running in place. Well, I, think, I think there's a difference between, okay, a guy who's just broke, dusty, and ain't, ain't about to. And a guy maybe, you know, he's down on his luck, he laid off from his last job, or he got fired from his last job for whatever reasons. So, you know, he's trying to get back on his feet. I think, you know, there's a huge difference between those two no type of guys out of his name. Yeah, I agree. You know what I'm saying? And you and you will you'll be able to tell what type what category he falls in by his history. A dude who tells you Man, I was working at such and such for the past nine years and I got laid off four months ago. That's a completely different story than a dude that ain't never worked nowhere and, and it doesn't have a history of providing for himself. You know what I mean? Like, so this that's the importance of having discussions, learning about their past. You have work history, like those type of things really matter, you know, and to me, I, I really don't see how people can date and not have those kind of conversations, but it's really apparent that people are not having these kind of conversations that I think are just, you know, no-brainer type of things. These are things right. that people people can be sleeping together and dating for months and never never talk about this type of stuff. Um, the last thing that I have that, uh, that you should be paying attention to during the dating phase is how consistent is he? Um, do his actions align with what he says he's about? Um, one thing that I've learned about me, people that are consistent, if they tell you something, it don't, it don't really matter what, it, what it's about. If, you talk, if you're dealing with somebody that's on, honest and genuine, 
what you br- what came up in one conversation is going to come up again. You know, for example, somebody could tell you that um, they, they, they in law school, right? The things that they are studying or going over in school are going to come up in conversations over dinner. They're going to come up on in conversations about what they have going on. You know what I mean? Like, so when somebody's telling you about their lives, those type of things are going to come up multiple times. You know what I mean? And, and right. those are the type, kind of things that you can use to spot, to catch somebody in a lie, to spot inconsistencies, or to pick up on things that just don't make any sense. You know what I mean? Like like somebody, you might meet somebody that told you they got a, a, a college degree. You know what I mean? And for the first couple of weeks, you believe them. Until they say or do something and you and it it gets brought up or something comes to light that indicates that they don't or those are the type of things where you can spot the inconsistencies and see where things don't really align where people may have embellished you know what I'm saying or over exaggerated something right that's very yeah, common you know they they're, they're right there you know there might be a little too padded there yeah I mean people have the tendency to try to make themselves look good to somebody that they want to be interested in them. That's it, it's human nature to a degree. You know what I mean? Um, but you can, you can do that without lying. You know what I'm saying? Like, so Absolutely. that that's the difference. When, when we're talking about a fuck boy, they, they, they start the dating process out lying and deceiving you. They, those are the type of dudes that lie and say they ain't got no kids and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, they lie about things that are really significant and they know would completely change your perception of them if you knew the truth. There's a reason that they're they're using that approach. You know what I mean? Even though it's very effective, a lot of women can't tell the difference between a fuck boy and a quality man. Thus, the, the reason we're doing this podcast tonight. You know what I mean? Like, so being able to take your time during the dating process Pay attention to, to to the things that are really relevant during the dating phase. That's how you can weed out the fuck boys, the deadbeats, and the dumbasses. Right. So, I mean, you just gotta, like I said, you just gotta look at, look at the signs and not necessarily see the personal attributes. Um, or even stuff, or what you say you was gonna do, or things that that's a, you know, I think, that, you know, things talk is cheap. always good in the beginning, but I think a lot, like the, like you said before, you know, I think a lot of times we just get ignored. Yeah, I mean, like I said, the, a lot of the things that women pay attention to are really irrelevant. And so if we can get them to start focusing right. on the things that really do matter, I think that'll that'll translate to a lot more right. success. Pay attention to, to the things. Pay attention to the things not, not the things that, you know, that doesn't matter here. All right, y'all. Uh, looks like we are up against the clock. Um, we're going to be wrapping up another episode. Shout out to UJ. Shout out um, to Brother Soul Productions for the audio. Um, everybody that's listening, make sure you go to my website, terryderon.com, to download my dating compatibility guide. It'll definitely help you um, navigate the dating process, figure out the conversations that you should, should be having, and effectively evaluate the person that you're dating. And it's only $1.50. So I appreciate everybody tuning into the podcast. Make sure you share it with your friends. Jay, appreciate the, another quality episode. Thanks for tuning in.